Hi guys and welcome to another Divi Theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we've got a little hero section here, a little title and some text and a little button. When we click on the button, a little contact form is going to pop up. Click on the button again, it'll disappear. Nice little feature. Easy to do, we've got to do a bit of CSS and JavaScript for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any code I write, I'll make downloadable and you're welcome to use it however you wish. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new page. Let's call it pop-up form. And I'm going to use the Divi Builder. Okay, I'm going to build from scratch. I'm going to use something like this because I want the text on the left and a bit more space on the right. Perhaps this one. Let's use this one. And for the title, I'm going to use a blurb. I'm not going to use the image, but I'll just use the title. And let's take some of that content away. Don't want quite as much as that. Obviously, you'd have something pertinent to say. Mine has no real content there. And let's go in and make that title a different color. Title text. And as usual, if you want to get to something to edit it, you can go to those little blue paint brushes or little blue circles with white paint brushes there. Click on it. It'll take you to exactly the right place. That's an H4, obviously. I'm going to make it blue. I'm going to make it bold. Make it a bit bigger. And let's also give it a bit of text shadow. Okay. Let's put a bit of a background in our hero section now blue tab for a section green tab for a row dark tab for a module I'm going to go into the section tab the blue one I'm going to go down to background color gradient image or video I'm going to grab an image I'll use the same one as I used before there we go okay well let's put a contact form here and then we'll work on creating the button so again, I'm going to add a new module. There's the contact form. I'm not going to spend too much time styling it. I'll leave it just as it is pretty much. I'm just give it a bit of a background there. I'll just go through it. For anybody that's not built one of these, you can give it a title there that will pop up the top. Success message. Sent. Your message has been sent. Whatever you want to put in there. Whatever you want the submit button to say at the moment default submit I'm going to leave that by that the important one obviously is the email where you want it sent you put in that in there if you want them to redirect to a different page or something afterwards you can do that here but I'm not going to spend too much time on this I've got various videos on contact forms I just want to give it a bit of a background so perhaps give it a dark blue background a little darker than that maybe yeah something like that and now I'm just going to give it a bit of padding all around so it's not cramped up against the side. So on the design tab, a bit of spacing. And let's give it 50 pixels padding all around. Just put in the 50, it'll put in the pics. Hit the chain to do the opposite side. Same for left and right. Great. So I'm going to give this a CSS ID now so we can actually target it with a bit of script. So I'm going to go over to advanced. Here's CSS ID in classes. I'm going to call mine pop form. Great. Now comes the fun part. What we want to do is create a button here that toggles this from visible to invisible. So let's add a little code module down below this. You can use a text module in text mode probably, but I'm going to use a code module because that's what it's for really move this out of the way so you can see what's going on and like I say I can't paste this script down below the video as usual because it won't let me put pointy brackets in there but I'll make this all this code downloadable in a little zip file or a text file of some sort so we want to create a button so it's left pointy the word button and we want to give it a class name so we can actually style it so I'm going to say class equals open some inverted commas. Give it the name that you want. Let's call it pop button, pop btn. 
Now, what do we want it to do? Well, on click equals, and we can open some inverted commas and tell it what we want to do. Well, we're going to create a function that we're going to get it to run. So I'm going to say my function. Open some round brackets at the end there. And let's close that out. And as you can see, it's put a closing button tag on the end there. We can put in the text that we want the button to say. Let's say more info or contact us or whatever it is you want to say. As you can see, it's created a sort of boring looking button there. So let's style our button. We've given it the class name of pop button. So I'm going to copy that. Control C. I'm going to drop down and open some style tags. And that's left pointy, the word style, and right pointy. There we go. I want to target that button. We've got the class name in the clipboard. All classes have to have a dot or period in front of them. So it's dot, then the class name. We can open some curly brackets now. And in between, we can style it. So I want to make it sort of the color of our text here, perhaps. I've got a free Chrome color picker up here. I'm using Google Chrome browser. Yeah, let's just grab that copy it and we'll say background and I'll paste in that hex code needs a hashtag in front of it then the hex code and as you can see it's turned it that color for us well I want my text to be white so I say color hashtag FFF which is white that's great that sorted that out I don't want that black border on there, so let's say border. None. Great, that's got rid of that. Now let's make it the size and shape that we actually want it. So I'm going to say 15 picks top and bottom, maybe 20 picks left and right. Make it kind of a button shape. So 15 picks top and bottom. There we go. And let's give it 25 left and right. Great, that looks kind of like a button. Might want to increase that font size a little bit. And of course you can put font family in as well if you want to change the font family of it to something else. So let's say font size. Let's go for about 20 pixels. Great, now that looks like a button. And let's give it a hover color as well. So when we hover over it, perhaps make it a different color. So what we can do is copy that class name again, drop down, right after it I'm going to put a colon, no gap after the end there, and the word hover, no gap after the colon either. So it's class name, colon, hover, no gaps. Now we can open and close some curly brackets. We can give it a different background color on hover. So let's say background I don't know, green, obviously whatever color you want. And as you can see, it's turning green. We can slow that down a bit, make it a little bit more graceful with some transition duration. We do that in the regular state, not the hover state. So let's pop that in there. And it's prompted us for it. Just click on there. And let's give it about three quarters of a second. So that's 0.75 S. Now it'll be a bit more of a gradual fade. There we go. I mean, if you really wanted to slow it down, you can slow it down to crazy amounts and get some sort of color gradients going in there. 2.75 seconds. It's a little over the top for me, but it goes through a little color gradient changes while it goes between the blues and the green. I'm going to leave mine at 0.75 or 0 0.75 be the same. Great. Well, now. Let's do the script to make this appear and disappear. Because we've told this function that we've told this button that it's got to complete a function called my function when we click on it. So let's create the function. I'm going to go down. I'm going to open some script tags, which are similar to the style tags, left pointy, the word script, and right one. As soon as you put that in, it'll put the closing tag in there for you. OK, so it's a function that we've created up there. So we'll say function. And what's the function name? It's my function. 
I put a capital F in there, make sure you get it exactly right, the same as whatever it is you called your function up here, my function. Okay, what do we want it to do? Let's open some curly brackets. Now we've given this element here an ID, I think we called it pop form. So I want to get that element by ID in a variation. So variation var element. And that's going to equal document dot get element by ID. I don't know if you notice each of those words, there's no spaces, but it's got a capital to differentiate between all of those. Now we need to give it the ID that we want to get, which is the ID we gave this, which was pop form. So let's open some round brackets inside some inverted commas and pop form. I'm just going to check that's the correct one. Let's go in here and make sure that is the one because if we get anything wrong here, this won't work at all. Yeah, pop form. Great. Okay, back as we were. Now what I want to do is create another style to make this disappear in a moment. So let's put a semicolon on there. And I'm going to say element dot class dot list. And we want to toggle it between two states. And I'm going to create those states in a moment. Let's give it some round brackets again. And let's make up a name for the style that we want to toggle. Let's call it toggle form. So TFM. Again, you can make yours whatever you wish but it really wants to make sense to you. That's kind of my short code for toggle form. All right, well, let's create this TFM style here. So we'll go back up to our style. We'll drop down. It's a class name. So it's dot TFM. And what I want to do is make sure that when we toggle, it's going to be visible. So at the moment, our pop-up form is visible. So I want to make sure that we can bring it back once we make it invisible. So for the toggle form style, so some brackets right here, I'm going to make sure it's fully visible by going opacity one, which is fully visible. Now I'm going to make this important because it's got to override the next style that I write. So I'm going to say exclamation important. All right, now we're going to take the pop form and make it invisible. Okay, well, let's drop down and let's make this form disappear now. Now we know it's got a CSS ID. All CSS IDs have to have a hashtag in front rather than a dot for classes. So it's hashtag pop form. What do we want to happen with it? Let's open and close some curly brackets. Well, initially, I don't want to see this at all. So let's give it opacity zero and make it disappear. And as you can see, or as you can't see, it's disappeared. Great. So we've got a little hero section here. We've got a title, some text, and a little button there. And if I save this now and click on it, it should pop up that form. So let's save everything. You'll get an error if you try and do it in the builder state. Save draft or publish if you're ready. Let's exit the visual builder. So here's our hero section. There's our little button. It's turning green. When I click on it, it's going to pop up our little form. They can fill it out and submit it. When I click on it again, it's going to disappear. Kind of like that to maybe fade in a little bit rather than popping up instantly. If that's going to work for you instantly, then you're good to go. Let's just make it fade in a little bit slow, slower. So let's enable the visual builder again. Let's go down into the button. And in the pop-up form regular, I'm going to add it transition duration, maybe a second and three quarters, perhaps second and a half. Let's do transition. 
and yeah, we'll say maybe 1.5 seconds 1.5 s and we should be good to go let's save this exit the visual builder and let's try that again there we go that forms taking a second and a half to fade in and fade out now when we do that so there you go guys there's how to create a little hero section with a pop-up form on button click I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to the YouTube channel once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesign and tech tips .com. thanks for watching have a great day